Welcome back to Trending in Education. Mike Palmer here. Very happy to be joined by Kelly Palmer. No relation, but a a wonderful uh, woman with a a really fantastic background in technology and learning. She's just written a book called The Expertise Economy, and she's also the chief learning officer at Degreed. Uh, We're going to get into all that as well as uh, her background. But to begin, I'd just like to welcome Kelly to Trending in Education. Welcome to the show. Great. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here today. I've seen some of your stuff on YouTube and out there in the world, and I know you have a pretty interesting backstory. So maybe we could begin in your own words, just talking about what got you to where you are uh, today. Yeah, that's an interesting path that I've taken with my career. I've been in Silicon Valley my, my whole career, and I spent a huge part of that career at Sun Microsystems. But it's interesting because even though so much of my focus today is on learning and education, I didn't start out in in learning at all. I actually started out in product development Mm -hmm. and uh, then I moved into corporate strategy. And then I have what I like to call a midlife career crisis where I was having fun. I was successful, but I just thought, is what I'm doing right now what I'm passionate about? And I did a little soul searching and realized I really wanted to move into education. When I got my undergrad degree, I think I wanted to go into education then, but in a way fell into tech and then just just progressed. And so anyway, I got this opportunity at Sun Microsystems to actually transition into a learning uh, role. We got a new chief learning officer and had a a pretty large learning organization where it was a revenue generating learning organization as well, about Mm. uh, 500 uh, million a year, which is not small. And we were responsible for employee learning as well as customer learning. So I got Mm. this great opportunity to lead a large learning organization there, went back to school, got my master's in education technology and adult learning theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never looked back. I've been passionate about the learning and education field since then. I moved on to Yahoo uh, for a couple of years running learning there. And then I got a great opportunity to start a learning organization from the ground up at LinkedIn. And then uh, about four years ago, I moved to Degree, where I am now. And Degree Mm -hmm. is an education technology platform for corporations, but focused on the individual. So that's a a high-level summary of my career journey, but I think if you looked at my LinkedIn profile, you might say, wow, I wonder how that happened because it doesn't actually look very linear or or logical. Yeah. Although in some ways, just to tie that back to the expertise economy too, if you're playing with your head up, you may need to make some sharper turns at times if you realize some of the skills that you've been developing may not set you up for the future of work. I know that's something that you you've written extensively about. That's really what your book's about, among other things. Can you introduce folks to to what you mean by the expertise economy? Yeah, I'd love to. So the expertise economy was developed out of this idea that I had spent uh, many years in corporate education and actually a, a bit surprised that how antiquated the models were in big companies, especially tech companies in Silicon Valley, but but really in corporate learning in general. And so this idea that we should be thinking differently about learning and education was what I brought to the table. My co-author is David Blake, the founder of Degreed, and Mm -hmm. his experience with education was complementary but completely different. And so we partnered on this idea that the world has changed dramatically and we've taken old models of learning and education into the corporate world and if we look forward to the future of work things were going to continue to change dramatically and so the idea was is to explain to people where, where we are and where we should be and where we're going in terms of the future of work education the skills people need for the future and how we need to just reimagine what we've been living and yeah, we've made it a few minutes without talking about the pandemic, but but I always wind up, just because it's a trend spotting show, we wind up talking about how trends have been, many of them have been accelerated. What are your thoughts about the, the skills economy, the expertise economy in light of the transform, and it's not just the pandemic, it's been just a transformative year on 
so many fronts. We empathize with everyone who's going through challenges this year, but any perspective, the, the book was written prior to 2020 and the pandemic. Yes. Any thoughts on what makes it more relevant or anything that you think is changed in light of the pandemic? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing to see how aligned our thinking in the expertise economy is to what's happening today. Because when I first started, when I was at LinkedIn, I was experimenting with a, an education technology platform, trying to get people to think differently about learning and then moving on to degree, it was that same path. So a lot of what I spend my time on is talking to people about how they need to think differently about learning. And I talked to businesses and companies around the world. And what I found was is that the early adopters and forward thinking companies got it right away. But that a lot of other companies were just stuck in these old mindsets of if you're not sitting in a classroom learning, you're not really learning. Right. So, so over time, over the last few years, as I've been speaking to people, I think more and more companies and learning organizations and talent and business leaders, frankly, mm -hmm. have, have understood the importance of learning and realizing that you need to be building skills all the time every day to keep up with how fast things are going. I mean, yes. when you talk about the expertise economy, it's about acceleration, digital transformation, and, and this whole idea that AI and machine learning and technology is changing right. the world forever. Mm -hmm. So now fast forward to the pandemic, and all of a sudden, it seemed like almost overnight, people were forced to yes. change the way they thought about learning and work. And so mm -hmm. people are working remotely. They're trying to figure out what do we do. And this isn't just HR learning and talent people. These are business leaders yeah. that are realizing, oh my God, if we don't get on board with uh, these new ideas about how people can learn and build skills, we're not going to be competitive and our people, frankly, won't be competitive. So yeah. I guess the biggest thing I've seen since the pandemic is just this acceleration to these new models where people who were a bit hesitant mm -hmm. or even business leaders who are a bit hesitant started to realize, oh, this remote work thing can yeah. actually work. And those people who were set up for learning remotely yes. uh, were able to keep their business going almost immediately because they could transition yeah. uh, more effectively. So that was one thing. And, that, and I'll say the second thing is around this whole idea of an internal career marketplace. Mm. The fact is that with the pandemic, what we found is that whole businesses have changed. I had one uh, client that I was working with that their salespeople couldn't go out on calls anymore, but their call center was being overwhelmed. So how do you understand what skills people have and mm. what skills you need? And so this idea of a career marketplace where you can actually match your talent with opportunities, either jobs or yeah. other things, we're, we're seeing that overwhelmingly be something that people are embracing, realizing how valuable it can be. Yeah, yeah. I was struck by that even in prep for this. I was looking at some of the degreed uh, demo videos and I was like, oh yeah, this actually does make a, a ton of sense where if you could get below the, the broad drop, job description level and more to a project opportunity level where I could do some skill development and actually help. It's like a win-win for the organization and the employee. That definitely came through in terms of what I saw. I do think, to your point, it is a very disruptive time for folks who were maybe slow to move. And then it's an opportunistic time for folks who might have been a little bit ahead of the curve. I did hear one of, your, one of the concepts you talked about, I, I think, was learning agility or the ability to you know, flexibly pick up new skills. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that this idea... First, if you think about the fact that a four-year degree will not take you through the entirety of your career anymore mm -hmm. and that you have to continuously learn. My son graduated from college a few years ago and it was almost immediately he's on the job learning new skills and he's learning new skills every day. So am I. So mm -hmm. should everyone right. if you want to stay competitive both personally and professionally. So the idea is that if you uh, broaden your definition of what learning is, it's not just sitting in the classroom. It can be videos and podcasts and what you read online, articles and books yeah. and you know what we're doing today. A lot of people are going to listen to this podcast and say, oh, I learned something that I didn't know before. How mm -hmm. great is that? And then mm -hmm. this idea that you could capture all of this learning into what we call a skills 
profile and actually start thinking about yourself as a collection of skills rather than just a job description or, yep. and that then you can apply your skills in a variety of ways on projects or even in new jobs. Think about all the transferable skills you learn over your career. And now I think the other thing that's happening that's really important is, is that now companies are realizing maybe I shouldn't just be looking at people with four-year degrees. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of amazing skills. Yeah. What if I just posted a project and said what skills I needed rather than what credentials or degrees that I needed? Mm -hmm. And that's a huge paradigm shift in the world of work and education. And so this idea that you can be learning agility is this curiosity and motivation to say, look, I want to be learning new things all the time. The funny thing is that a lot of people are learning all the time and they don't even realize it. So right. you know, if you have degreed and, and you can start looking at, oh, I've, I'm learning, I've been doing all this learning and oh, I'm building a new skill that I didn't even realize I was building. That's the idea behind learning agility. Yeah, yeah. And I always quote Bill Taylor from Fast Company who asks, are you learning as fast as the world is changing? And he asked that maybe four or five years ago or longer, mm -hmm. and the world just continues to change faster. So it's like right. the rate at which you're learning almost has to continue to increase just to keep up, which actually can be overwhelming and, and, and exhausting in a lot of ways. I did want to get to that aspect of it too. Like the, the social emotional aspect of skill development is an interesting uh, angle to the conversation where I know you've thought a lot about automation and about the digital transformation. But you're also thinking about the role that humans will play and and how a lot of that is social and communication related. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So I think that one of the things both individuals and companies are struggling with right now is, okay, I buy into this idea that I need to be thinking about skills, what skills people have, what skills they need. But what should I be focusing on in the future, both as an individual and how should I, as a company, how should I advise or guide my leaders or my employees on what skills that they need? And so you can find out there lots of the World Economic Forum and a mm -hmm. lot of different places that will say these are the most important skills that you should be focusing on. And I usually talk about them in two ways. One, technical skills, which are really important. And we can see data analytics and artificial mm -hmm. intelligence and cybersecurity. All of those technical skills are really important. But then if you look at the other side, what we call or what I call power skills, a lot of people are calling human skills. Mm. Those are probably the most important skills for the future. And a lot of times we've known those as soft skills, but yeah. I hate that term yeah. because there's nothing soft about them. They are, they're really powerful. So skills like critical thinking, boy, could we use some more of that right. today? Yeah. And emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and collaboration and communication. Those are all very transferable skills, but they're the human skills. So as AI and machine learning and automation starts taking over those more routine tasks that we think about in the world of work, what that does is it frees us up as humans mm -hmm. to start focusing on creating more value. And so those human skills are going to be so much more important because we can partner with machines and uh, technology in order to do those more routine tasks. So if you yeah. think about the combination of those those two, that's, I think, what the future of work really looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd love to get a little more out of you on that, too, because we do. We love talking about robots because robots are entertaining uh, to think about. And then folks have different views on uh, what the future will be like for the, the typical employee. And then maybe that there's really no such thing as a typical employee. So maybe that different people will adopt different attitudes and approaches to their own career development, skill development, et cetera. Do you have any thoughts, first, like how nervous do we have to be about the robots? And then secondly, how do you stay on the right side of the wave? There a lot of folks talk about this as the, the fourth industrial revolution. This wave is coming through, this wave of automation. It's probably accelerating due to the, the pandemic and the response in some ways, like we talked about. What's your advice to employees or leaders of organizations in terms of thinking about automation and trying to navigate the, this fourth industrial wave? It's, a, it's an important time. I think some of it goes to what we talked about in terms of keeping up on what's going on in the world of work and learning. I'm online all the time trying to understand 
since things are changing so fast, what's happening in our world today and what's happening in the future? And I think, and some people have a bit of blinders on. It's like, I've got my job yeah. and I know how to do it. And mm -hmm. so I'm not going to even think about what's out there. But I think that the advice we can give to people is, first of all, be aware of what's happening around you in the world. If you work for a company that is heavy in manufacturing, realize that a lot of those jobs are going to be automated. But I, I never see that as a doom and gloom scenario because there's always new jobs that are being created mm -hmm. every day. I used to, when I first started talking about the future of work, I, I talked about, look at all the new jobs that were created in the last 10 years that we couldn't even have imagined existed. Mm -hmm. And now we just think of them as normal jobs. Right. And uh, so I think the examples, they're a little old now, but like Uber drivers, people totally. didn't now Uber drivers are delivery, food delivery people as well. But there's so many jobs that are being created that are new given the automation. And that's why I think it's so important for people to understand, to keep up to date on what's happening in the world around them. Because you can see, I, I love this idea of a GPS for your career, where mm. you can see these new jobs or these new things mm. that are coming out. And you're saying, oh, I have these skills today, but look at how many of the skills that I have actually relate to that new job that's just now being yeah. created. And I would also say that people have the opportunity to create the jobs and the roles or the work that they want to do because mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity out there. So I'd look at it very opportunistic. And, and I think it's always good to start with what are the inventory of the skills that I have? What am I interested in? What might yeah. I have to learn to be ready for what I'm interested in doing in the future of work or what my company is focusing on mm -hmm. as we think about the future of work? Yeah, that makes sense. And do you have any recommendations there too? Because I, I think it's a pretty crowded playing field when it's trying to understand what skills, what language do I use to describe my skills? How do I assess whether I actually have them or not. So a few months ago, I actually wrote a white paper uh, called Seven Steps to Upskilling Your Workforce. And I've also helped uh, transform that into a talk for individuals as well. Mm -hmm. But I'd say that you have to focus in on a few things, focus on, on a few skills. So for example, I've worked with companies that would say, look, we're going to give our employees guidance on the three skills that are most important for the company. And then we're going to go down to the organizational level and say, these are the three to five skills that are most important for engineering or finance or marketing or HR, whatever those are. And then at the individual level, say, think about your career dreams and your career aspirations. Are you trying to get better at the job that you have? Are you trying to get ready for what's next? hone in on that and then set a goal. You can only focus on so many skills at a given time. Yeah. So pick one or two and then focus on that. Hit a goal and then see how you're progressing. Degree has a way to assess your skills right in our application. You can do a self-assessment. You can have a peer or a manager assess you. But we're also bringing in all kinds of signals from a variety of sources. So Pluralsight is a big content provider for a lot of the technical skills. They have something called Skills IQ. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at edX, they have a bunch of nano degrees and micro degrees. Imagine you can bring all these signals in yeah. to assess the skills that you have, and then you can see, pick a skill or two that you want to focus on, and then you can reassess and see how you're progressing. But this idea of a skills profile or portfolio can be mm -hmm. incredibly powerful moving forward because then you can see and then if you're at a company managers can also see what what skills people have what skills they need and if you have a project you, and you're a manager you can see oh there's a person that has skills that i actually need yeah. or I'm, you know th that's the idea anyway yeah yeah and that was something i got even just from a quick look at degree and it, it is something that i've been reflecting on more lately that spending a little time to reflect on and package your skills and think about your own narrative in terms of your skill development, both in the sense that you're continuing to develop skills, but also that it's not just like randomly picking up skills that don't fit together. Right. Instead, talking about how if you are a Swiss Army knife, it's so you can do great stuff with the Swiss Army knife. It's not just ran, like you're not randomly collecting skills, you're doing them in support of a career direction. Yes. And then you also have the agility to your previous point that if that career direction needs to shift, what I found in my career is that frequently skills that I may have taken for granted in a previous incarnation suddenly come back to life when you do shift. It almost, when you were reflecting on your exit from, from Sun back in the day, 
it almost sounds at different points in our career, we have to lean into that risk to actually get the genuine fulfillment. Any perspective on that? Absolutely. When I, in reflecting back on my own career, I never would have imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing today. But I think about the skills that I've gained over time. Like I mentioned, I was, you know, in product development, and then I moved into education and 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 learning. And then I also focused on writing and communication early in my career. So yeah. I look at all of those skills and how they have brought me to where I am today. And I'm using all of them, my product development, I'm using yeah. my education background, I'm using my writing with writing the book. I, I, I have a hard time believing that's just by chance. I feel like even though I didn't know years ago that I would be combining all of these skills, it's my personal career path that has led me to realize, oh, I can bring all of these things together and create something amazing. And I'm sure that if people were to reflect more on their career yeah. and their career goals and then the skills that they have, they could imagine putting together their skills in a unique and uh, powerful way. Yeah, for sure. It just takes a little time to reflect. And like it or not, many of us have time to <laughs> reflect these days. And if folks want to learn more about any of the stuff we talked about, the, the book is The Expertise Economy. Where else should they go? Yeah. So here's a few places. So if you want to learn more about the book, um, we have a website, theexpertiseeconomy.com. Mm -hmm. If you want to connect with me, I'm on uh, LinkedIn. And part of what Degree does is that if you decide you want to share with people what you're learning and the skills that you're building, as I'm doing, yeah. you can go uh, follow me at, at kelly at degree.com and you can see what I'm learning and the skills that I'm building and the people that I'm following. And mm -hmm. so that's interesting. So you can also find me there as well. Yeah. I thought it was a nice, like a skills-based icebreaker where you <laughs> could compare, because I remember we did a strengths finder when I was at Kaplan oh, yeah. and it was like, it's like a better than a horoscope because it's actually based a little bit on some stuff, but like a skills-based profile is really interesting too, because I could see it both if you overlap, it's interesting, but even if you complement, like you were mentioning before, uh, when you're writing the book, it's important not just to find people who have the same skills. It's also important to find people who can maybe round out a team or round out your own strengths and weaknesses. Really cool stuff. Before we let you go though, Kelly, I always love to ask my guests, what trends are capturing your imagination out in the world today? And as someone in your role, I imagine you're tapped into a lot of really interesting thinking about strategy and digital transformation and future of work and learning, AI, et cetera. So no pressure, but I'd love to hear from you maybe a couple of things that are capturing your attention these days. So I think one of the first things, and we wrote the book, The Expertise Economy, not for learning and talent people, but actually for business leaders, because to help them realize the value of, of success in their company and skills and learning. And what I find really so interesting, what's so interesting right now is more and more I'm having conversations with business leaders who are realizing that this whole idea of learning and skills and matching those skills to opportunities is actually helping them accelerate their digital transformations in their mm -hmm. companies. And uh, I often say, I don't think I've ever, I've talked to one company around the world that's not going through some sort of digital transformation. And so that's on a business leader, CEO agenda. So I think that's, I think the most satisfying thing is that people are realizing that. I think the other thing is that people are realizing that because of COVID and the acceleration and all the change that we've seen recently, that people are willing to now be brave and bold and try new things that they mm -hmm. hadn't tried before. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people jump to webinars and uh, some people, I cringe a little bit at this, putting their lecture-based learning online, which isn't very exciting. Yeah. But I think what I'm seeing is a lot of people experiment with new, really creative ideas around virtual collaboration and mm -hmm. learning. And I think we're just going to see more and more of that. And it just, all it takes is people's imagination and figure out what what might work try things and then and then see if they work and if they don't try something else so I'm seeing a lot of 
companies and individuals try new things around that. And it's really amazing to see. And then I'd say the last thing that the big trend I'm seeing is around careers and just that people are realizing, look, this isn't a company's responsibility to help you Mm -hmm. drive your career. You have to take some personal responsibility and nobody cares about your career as much as you do. So think about it. Think about where you're going and where you want to go. And I think individuals are going to have much more say in their future than they realize. So Mm -hmm. for example, this whole remote work thing has gotten people to say, some people to say, I can't imagine going back to the office and I probably won't work for a company in the future that doesn't offer me some flexibility in how and when and where I work. Mm -hmm. And so imagine that trend being something that managers who are in this command and control model where they want to know everything that their employees are doing every second and they're so uncomfortable with this remote work, that is going to be something that is not going to help them move forward in the world of work. And so those companies, I I don't know if you saw that Microsoft just announced their remote work policy recently, and they said, we will try to be as flexible as possible. That's a company that's over 100,000 people. And what they're saying is, look, we want you to work for us, and we're going to try to make that happen in any way. It's going to be a competitive advantage, and and it's going to help you recruit, uh, attract and recruit the best talent anywhere in the world. So those are some of the trends yeah. that I think are so exciting and and that we should be thinking thinking about for the future for sure. That's awesome. Fantastic stuff from Kelly Palmer, one of the authors of the Expertise Economy. She's also the Chief Learning and Talent Officer at Degreed, connecting the dots uh, between learning and the future of work. Really fascinating stuff. Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And and if we're, if we're even though we're not related, I feel a kinship to you with our <laughs> last name, both being Palmer. Excellent. So thanks for having me. Yeah, it's fantastic having you on. And thanks everyone for listening. If you like what you're hearing, tell a friend, write us a review. Every little piece of love helps. We'll be back again soon.